there. Welcome to We'll See You in Hell. It's a podcast that's now part of the Fangoria Podcast Network. And if you want some more information about the Fangoria Podcast Network or, or other programs or this program or whatever, you fucking go to Fangoria.com. All right? Good. How's it going, Patty? <laughs> it's going good. <laughs> I'm going to cough into the mic real quick. It's going good. Uh, this is the seventh and final episode of our second season. We're going to be focusing on the sin of envy. Uh, I know we have a lot to discuss. But before we do, I'm driving over here. Uh-huh. And I see on the back of a bus an advertisement for a pill called PrEP. Right. <coughs> Sorry. I'm like, well, what the hell's PrEP? Look a little closer. There's like a bunch of like, you know, dudes running on the on the pill. I figure it's like an energy pill or something. Sure. I get closer to the to the bus and I see that it is a pill to keep you HIV negative. Is what the slogan is. So I look it up. I I guess this is a pill that you take. It's a daily pill that if you were to insert your dick into a an AIDS ravaged hole, <laughs> right? You wouldn't get AIDS. And how am I learning about this pill from a bus? Shouldn't this be national news? <laughs> is it real? That can't be real. It's on a bus. It can't be real. You know, e-cigs were on buses, and now there's all this shit coming out about them. What about them? That they're, you know, they're now getting banned from all the public places because they actually could be harmful and blah, blah, fuck. Who fucking knows? My point is, is you saw ads for those things all over the place. And yeah. It's still in question. Well, I don't think you can legally claim that you can keep someone from getting HIV and not be able to back up that claim. Well, how much does it cost? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm off the market. I, I'm not even interested in it anymore. But when I was single, I sure would have been to know that you're, well, ne- that you're never going to get HIV. I'm curious, and I'm going to ballpark a cost here. I'm going to say it's a hundred dollars a month. It's a, it's a single pill taken once daily, highly effective against HIV when taken every day. You sure it's not to suppress HIV if you already have it? Yeah. Yes, it's to keep you HIV negative is what the slogan said. Prep pill cost yeah. is... I'm guessing 100 bucks a month. They don't usually put this shit online. How is much it things over cost. the counter? No, I'm sure it's not. Prescription. Oh, without insurance, prep costs about $1,300 a month. Okay, what about with? I don't know. I mean, uh, how deep we want to go into this? Well, hey, now is that the... That's not the pill that the fucking little bastard that bought the Wu Tang CD had no, anything no, no. to do with. Well, his pill was like a medication. Yeah, yeah, AIDS medication. Right. That guy, I hope, has been beaten to death by now. He 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 Martin made Scrivelli or something is his name. Screlli, yeah. Screlli. You know what? I don't even feel like talking about him. No, we've, he's been past. talked about to death. The uh, I'm in a. Well, I was in a mood when you walked in. I'm very tired, and mm-hmm. we were discussing a Twitter thing. Right. You know, girl made fun of me on Twitter the other night. She made a shitty comment that, that I basically had no talent. And You were on At Midnight. Yeah, and she you said know, she was a, rolling a her eyes. She watched you on At Midnight, didn't like your material, apparently, which is, I didn't see it. I won. I'd like to... Make oh that's great. Make note of that. I also heard this very podcast got a mention. This very podcast was my plug. We're probably talking to ten, maybe twelve new listeners tonight. <laughs> now was my name mentioned? No. Or, oh no. What what do I have a fucking hour to let you know? You got to get the plug in fast. Patrick Walsh, like maybe a second. Then the audience is going who, and then they miss the title of the, the audience podcast. Is going, Pat Walsh hangs out with this chode. You know that ain't you know. Yeah. You, you, effective, buddy. Effective. All right. Just checking. Now, had it been you on the show, I would suggest mentioning my name. <laughs> That's just the way I'm going to tell you. Yeah. I feel. But anyway, she said she was having a hard time watching the show because she's rolling her eyes the whole time. I can't resist. I go to her Twitter feed to see, uh, you know, and then and around that is all these other tweets about how I'm so sick of fucking mediocre men having platforms to spew their garbage. 
This is the first time I ever watched the show. Shut it off in five minutes. But like, I hate it. Just mediocre, men miserable, and women have that. She's never seen the show. She was basing the entire show was it a three man panel on the three man panel, which we do a pretty good job of having men. And they women do a great and people job. Of all races and they it was they did it was a three man panel of me, Dan Soder, and Al Jackson, uh -huh. and then so she judges the entire show on that, right? And then on top of it, uses me as the example of like I'm the fucking asshole. By the way. She was apparently mad about a rape joke I made on the show. This was the rape joke. They go, "What? What's a magazine article you might find in an, in a prison only magazine?" Okay. And I go, ten ways to use your butthole. It's not just for rape anymore." <laughs> okay. Funny bit. Yeah. I mean, it, you mentioned prison, and it's a comedy show. One of the three people will make a rape joke. Exactly. You, you know that. Exactly. So she. Uh, so anyway. She writes, hard to watch the show when I'm rolling. Joe DeRose is making me roll my eyes. I write back, look on the bright side. At least it's at least the rolls aren't in your stomach for once. Uh huh. Which I thought, given the circumstances of Twitter, character limitation, uh, play on the word roll. Right. Snappy comeback. Right. The body connection, rolling the eyes, rolls of fat in the stomach. I thought that was a hell of a comeback. It is. I winced when you told me about it because I, you can see where it's going. You know, if you think about a woman who's talking about the well, patriarchy and et cetera, and then you're going to say she's got rolls of fat, well, it's not going to go well. She writes back. You're not at a, at a roast. She you know? writes back, oh, cute, make fun of a woman's body, whatever. And I go, oh, cute, pull the woman card now because you can dish it out, but you can't take it. Right. She writes something else back. I write, hey, I don't know what to tell you. You made a joke at my expense. I made one at yours. I can't even see your body in the in the picture. I yeah. just see your face. Yeah. Uh, and and then she wrote, "If you think that's a joke, maybe try a new line of work." I guess. It's like <laughs> now this fucking this fucking asshole is 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 assessing my entire career. Yeah. And I go, nope. But a bit of advice for you. Maybe don't attack people on here for no reason, and your interactions might be more pleasant. Sure. Because at the end of the day, and then I went back and I deleted the tweets because I'm like, you know what? It, it, I shouldn't have engaged this to begin with. Right. It's just shitty to have this fucking dumb joke floating. I just was like, whatever. I she mean, screen you, and you probably don't engage with any of the positive shit. I do engage with some of it. I don't engage with it. Once in a while, I engage with a negative thing because it right. just... I, and I, I gotta be honest, that engagement was more me laughing and being like, right, right. "I'm hitting the ball back to you." And then she takes it right to this fucking gender issue. Yeah, it's like, "Hey, sister, fuck you, okay? You're gonna attack my fucking talent, and you think somehow that's less yeah. offensive than me making a fat? I don't even know if you're fat. It's just a, just a dumb fucking joke <laughs> that I made. Yeah, and then she screen caps it and sends it to the show, and like." Yeah, because that's what should happen. I should get... She's like, is this the caliber of comic you want associated with your program? Because in her head, Ultimate Justice would be at midnight saying he can never come on again. It's also like, is she acting like at midnight would not host someone who would dare to make a fat joke? They were it's making not, terrible jokes. It's not jokes. Meet the Press. The whole show, yeah. It's a show about for comedians to make dick jokes. It's just, look, you know, I'm... I, 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 I think she, her and her ilk... Are people to be avoided in life on Twitter? They they are not seeking joy or humor. They are seeking uh, a fight in every interaction, and there's no point to it. But you going back at her, you can't be surprised it went this way. No, I'm not. I'm mad at myself for uh, giving I'm mad at in you both <laughs> to the passion. Yeah, I gave in to the passion. You're a passionate man. I don't like getting fucking singled out like that. Don't fucking single me out. I, I'm not uh, Jenny McCarthy. I'm not. Chris Hardwick. Yeah, there you who go. Who was on Singled Out, bringing it full circle. I did later write to her right at midnight and say, hey, can we get this gal a mug and a T-shirt? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what she's going to do? Just fill it up with gravy. <laughs> Sit and sip at it all day. Then wipe her mouth off with the shirt. <laughs> um, We're talking good about to see Envy. You, Joe. It's been a while. What, now, what did we want to start with on Envy? Because we we brought it up briefly on the previous episode, and we said we couldn't wait to close with Envy. 
because we had so much to say. Oh, uh, I was just saying that'll be a, a juicy topic for us. I don't think we had something in particular. Well, I remember you mentioning billboards around town or something. Yeah, I asked if the bill- billboards for comedy specials bug you. We discussed that then. But, you know, because you're a comedian, you see that, how did this fucker get a, uh, get a special. But you have a special coming up. So yes. I'm sure you don't feel that envy so strongly. For yeah, me, I, I try not to. I try not. I, you know, for, I will say this: for the most part, I'm happy for people. Yes. When they get stuff, the only time I get annoyed is when, when there's clearly a hustle going on. When a oh when, yeah. When I'm being sold something, yes. like that, I'm supposed to think this person's like a brilliant whatever, and it's like that's yeah. when I start to go, oh fuck you. Either, and that can either be. You know, Comedy Central trying to tell you somebody's the best comedian of their generation or whatever the fuck it is. What gets to me more is when the person is doing it themselves, lying, hustling, trying to sell themselves. And that goes on a lot in this town where you will know that someone is not funny, is not talented, can't write, can't act, can't can't tell jokes, whatever the case may be. Uh, They get fired from every job they have. And yet they keep getting work and it goes on and on and on because they're able to hustle and lie and cajole. And that is not an envy because I don't envy that life, which must be just miserable lying to everyone that you meet, knowing that your lies could come back to get you, et cetera, et cetera. To haunt you, to stay on the horror theme. Right. To haunt you. Uh, I don't envy that life, but I do when I see someone undeserving getting success, it drives me a little crazy and sometimes can like lose a week for me where so I just a mentally little, go off the grid. It's a little less about envy, a little more about wanting justice to be served. Justice. My therapist talks to me all the time about my desire for justice and how maybe I was treated unjustly by bullies or family or whatever the case may be as a child and it it puts me on high alert for injustice i I have a hard time treating you properly you do no no shit (laughs) i know um speaking of which if we can just side note for a second side note for all this podcast is side note away uh this is probably the first episode of the show that we're doing alcohol free yeah because pat is on a goddamn fucking cleanse and it just irritates the shit out of me when you do these cleanses it does, i don't it, know why it makes me so mad it you know, it's just because i like having a great time with you really so but but i also like having a great time there couldn't be anything less helpful to me when i'm doing this than constantly <laughs> asking me to drink or to eat my girlfriend's baking up delicious treats she never bakes anything <laughs> baking it up we got, we got a, a simmering crock pot of pulled pork out last night i'm like what the you know how to make pulled pork <laughs> smelling up the damn house like it just drives you crazy i do it for two weeks a year i drop 20 pounds every year i gain 20 pounds i lose 20 pounds roughly is that healthy no but it's what i do i, I don't know what to tell you why don't you try to fucking control yourself for the rest of the year so you don't have to go on this cleanse no once. i do that as well it's just it makes me feel good my skin looks better my i have more energy it, res- it just resets the clock I get to a point every year where I'm like stressed and I have deadlines and shit and I'm just eating too much and drinking too much and smoking too much and doing everything too much and I just need to reset and take a step back. Hey man, I'll tell you, you you've picked, been there. You picked a hell of a time to do the cleanse at the tail end of your vacation. I mean, really, this is the most fun time. We were talking about taking a trip yeah. out to the desert. We had all this. We're going to. When? I just thought I need to quickly do it now because it involves waking up and drinking a bunch of salt water and shitting for for an hour. Right. doesn't really go well with a work schedule. I get free lunch at work. I don't want to pass that up. God forbid. Um, But look, I... You're missing a hell of a party tonight, buddy. I'll tell you that. My friend's having a birthday party. It starts at midnight. Where is that at? Uh, A friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, has a like a comedy improv room or whatever. Kamal? She owns it. Emily? No, no, no. This woman we know owns it. Who? It's, it's, you don't know her. You said a mutual friend of ours. No, of me and the birthday person. Oh, s- yeah, sorry I didn't pick that up. <laughs> when you look me in the eye and say a mutual friend of ours. Well, you didn't pick it up because you're dizzy from being on this goddamn wa- water diet that you're doing. I feel great. Uh, 
and you look great, especially in this position you're lying in right now. Sort of a Burt Reynolds and Playgirl. <laughs> it's half Reynolds, half Cleopatra. Yeah. I don't know which way to go with this. <laughs> um, sh- we have a friend that owns a venue. The friend is, you know, opening the venue at like midnight, off hours, and we're going in and doing karaoke. Okay. And hitting it hard, boozing it up for the birthday. My friend's got an 8 a.m. flight out of town. She, The email said, let's make this difficult. Yeah. I mean, she's ready to burn. I got a bottle of Jameson uncracked over there that I'll be bringing to the party. I mean, I could possibly go. I, I don't. There you go. You know, I'm going to see The Who this evening which I was very much made fun of uh, yesterday. Do you still have a spare ticket? No. Who's going with you? I sold it. Oh, okay. Or my floor night- seat, I looked on StubHub. I was like, oh, shit, this is going for a ton of money. I'll just fucking sell it and yeah. go to the show. My night got freed up. It's fine. I'll take a nap. So you didn't say you were busy. You You mocked me for wanting to see one of history's greatest rock bands Frankly, before they die we mock each other that's what we do yeah. you were mocking me we mock each other we do you gotta admit seeing the who right now isn't gonna be the best way of seeing the who i'm no, sorry that's true have you seen them on like they, they pop up every so often on american idol or some shit like that and it's yeah. like it's never that great it looks like Roger Daltrey's chest has had a facelift right it probably it's has. An odd, it looks odd like pete townsend is still pretty cool Except for the perhaps kitty porn dungeon. I, you know what? I believed his story on that. He never offended again. It was a one-time thing, and I believed him. He was like, I, yeah. I was trying to see like what what was going on because I wanted to make a documentary about it. But now I thought he was doing like a rock opera about it. But no, hey, he was he he was molested as a he kid. He was molested, right? And he said he wanted to do a documentary exposing what's going on out there. Yeah. And he was like, I was I was trying to find like sites to see like that I could expose. I believe that. All right, it's just, uh, and plus, you know, when you're that old, you don't think the internet is going to keep a record of everything you do, apparently. No. I he didn't even know he was looking, he thought he was looking at a light bright. <laughs> he didn't know what the hell he was looking at. Light bright. Especially when you're that famous, by the way, he could say, you know, yeah, bring me the fresh butthole of a child. And <laughs> right. That's his thing, and he's got people that are, could make it happen, probably. Uh, Elijah Wood just uh, gave some interview where he talked about, he was careful to say that he was not molested, but that the biggest problem in Hollywood, he thinks, bigger than anything else, is pedophiles. I've heard this. And Corey Feldman has gone on and on about that, about how these vipers, as he calls them, including, of course, his dear friend Michael Jackson, which we all know about now, (laughs) Were, it is strange. He was a big proponent of Mike. Yeah, I don't think anymore. <laughs> but no, uh, he was at the funeral and so yeah. I mean, you know, Michael Jackson and Macaulay Culkin had their period as well. You know, you look at Macaulay now, you got to think maybe something happened there. Elijah was like Macaulay my mom. Looks somehow looks like Mark Hamill at the end of the new Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, he does. And there's a 30 year gap there easily. I yeah. mean, I don't know what the fuck Macaulay's doing, man. It's a shame because as a 10-year-old boy, he had better comedic timing than most people who are 40 years old still doing it. Yeah, I know. He was incredible. I was a little disappointed in that Funny or Die video they did. I wanted that to yeah. be funnier when yeah. he was the grown-up Kevin McAllister. Oh, I didn't see it. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, but yeah, for, to say something is the biggest problem in Hollywood, which is easily the most fucked up industry there is... Um, is kind of insane. Like that means that Elijah Wood knows of and saw a lot of pedophilia going on. Yeah. Well, the, the Brian Singer thing was qu- very quickly buried, but I sort of know from which I would not dare of even mentioning the way I know this person, but some kid who was like 17 years old or something. And he said, Brian Singer was like, had him at a, he paid, paid his rent out here in LA for three years. And you yeah. just come in and fuck him and leave. I completely 100% believe the Brian Singer yeah. stuff is true. Yeah, of course. Um, from a lot of hearsay. But, yeah. you know. We both have some hearsay on the on problem. Singer. The problem is is with anything else, with anybody that does anything rotten in this town. Yeah. They, uh, to, to, to prove it or to go to the lengths of trying to prove any of it would be virtually impossible. Yeah. It would cost you an amount of money you, you would probably never see in a lifetime. Yeah. And it would destroy your life. So it's a very, very hard fight to fight. You know? And you're going up against people with 
a thousand times your money. You're not going to win. Yeah, it's it's a disgusting bureaucratic system of pigs. Yeah, and you know all you can do is hope that uh, you do the right thing. And if you encounter something bad, you can talk about your own situation. But yeah. you know wh- wh- who of us is going to launch a campaign against Brian Singer? No. Well, yeah, it's I, I also think there's a. Ch- I'm, I'm not saying Brian Singer would have you killed, but I mean it's not another no. realm of possibility in this town that somebody could have you murdered for something like that. Yeah, I feel like that happened much more in the 50s. Right. But, uh, you know, I'm sure it still happens. I, I was gambling this weekend. I won another large sum of money. And uh, they had a giant poster up. I was at Planet Hollywood. They had a giant po- framed poster of Frank Sinatra uh, in a shirt and pants with a giant uh, gun on a holster. Like right. looking out with a big smile on his face. And I was like, that maybe that was a better time. Uh, big picture wise, I don't think it was. Yeah. Socially, on the small picture, I think it was. Yeah. You know, big picture wise, you had a lot. You know, women's rights were women were worse off. Any minority group was worse off. For sure. Uh, you know, but in a but in a social setting, you take a guy where I could say, hey, I'm not subscribing to the ideals of the South or the general sexist whatever right, or right, patriarchy. Right. Uh, you know, and you had the right to individually go against those things. I think it was a better time. I'd rather be in a fucking bar and somebody starts talking shit and you go, let's go fight. Yeah, I agree. Can't do it anymore. You can't. I And, you, you know, can't. I look you look around. I'm at a really nice casino, the Cosmopolitan. You look around and there's like, you know, there's girls gambling in bikinis, which is great, A. But also it's kind of like put a fucking dress on. Like no one, no one's there in a suit, is what I'm saying. And Vegas used to be like you dress up, you go out. You go to any restaurant yeah. in L.A., it's people in flip flops and shorts. And you know, I don't go that extreme, but I dress down going to these places too, because I'm like, well, I'm not going to be the chump standing out. No, but I mean, you look it, at a picture in the '50s. Every hamburger stand, every guy's got a shirt and tie on. Yeah, it's kind of sad. We live in a time of pigs. It's a real shit diarrhea show out there. And- <laughs> There's really no hope in it getting better. It'll continue to get worse. Yeah. As it always has. And uh, of course. all you can do is have a good time. That's why I don't get this cleanse. Just have some fun. Well, I will have a better time in my social interactions uh, and et cetera if I if I drop a little excess weight that I, I put know, on throughout I the know. year. I'm i I'm just I was just making a joke. And sometimes, you know, you you're you're off drinking or whatever else. It it, it happens. I gotta tell you it's very rarely these days. It is much rarer <laughs> these days than it used to be. You used to be like a one week on, one week off kind of guy. Uh yeah, there was a time I just I don't care anymore. Yeah. I like having drinks. I don't do it every day. Yeah. Or I don't think I do at least. Right. <laughs> but but right now, also too, like I'm not, you know, if I'm on, a, I'm not, a, I'm in between. I don't, I'm not on a writing job now, and I'm, and I'm not on the road. So, when I have these stretches at home, without anything, any commitments besides doing my sets and writing here in the apartment, mm-hmm. it feels kind of like a vacation to me. It is, you know. Then I go back on the road, and it's like I got to get a little more focused. Yeah, I mean, you, you and I both have lives that even when when working sort of can feel like vacations that's that's why i don't feel a a struggle with envy (laughs) i don't nice way to bring it back unless i didn't think we were ever going back i gotta be (laughs) honest we were so far away from it at this point no we weren't we were you know we're talking about people we're disgusted with which to me if you want to call it a bastardized version of envy then fine because none of these people i don't envy the pedophile who gets away with it for a hundred years. I don't envy what that soul must look like. I don't envy Bill Cosby. You know, like did he live his life how he wanted to for seventy years? He sure did. Is he going to enjoy the winding down of his life? I sure hope not. And it seems like a big no. Like these people have to live with what they've done. So I don't envy it. It's really a rough scene reading those transcripts from the the depositions. Yeah. Just like, did she masturbate you with lotion? Yeah. And being like, yes. Like, it's just, oh, it's creepy. And then now it's all uh, underage girls is coming out. Oh, boy. It's just going to keep spiraling. And he's not going to have to pay for any of it, I don't think. 
Well, no, the trial in Montgomery County, where I grew up, the courthouse, my hometown courthouse is where the trial's happening. All right. Uh, and it is happening. It is happening. Well, I have then a friend how, that works there. How could he get off? There'll be another riot. What do you mean, how could he get off? How could he get off with the amount of evidence we have here? Well, well we don't have, I, the I problem don't, is we don't have pubes I don't, and jizz and stuff. I don't know what evidence there is pertaining to that trial, but I mean, that is going to trial. Yeah. All so right. that could be the one sort of, you know, now it is a sexual assault related trial, but I feel like that could be the sort of Al Capone thing where it might not be the heaviest allegation. Yeah. Right. Or maybe it is. I don't know. But if it's not, it could be the thing that puts him away and. I mean, I hope he just fucking kills himself before it gets there. What a fucking loser. Uh, I mean, I, no, I don't want him to kill himself. He should have to go to jail and, and pay for something. But he will, though. Like, that's just the perfect coward's out for him is to kill himself. Like, yeah, but then he doesn't have any punishment. There's no punishment. You know? Well, then it's like, that's like, then it's not on his chest Well, hell. Uh, it's, it's supposed to go to hell. There's no hell. <laughs> We'll see you in hell. We sure will. There is no, I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying. It's like, come on, he's got to suffer a little bit, man. No, I agree. I agree. I can't believe the poise the fucking guy has through all this. Oh, he's dis he's disgusted with us for for daring to, to, to rain on his parade. That's yeah. the attitude he has. It's shocking to me. It is. How dare you? I guess you all want your hot gossip, huh? It's like, no, you, you raped minimum 100 women. <laughs> What do you you don't get to talk down to us anymore? Yeah, no, it's you've been doing it for thirty years, but that's enough. God, earth shattering. You know, I always said when Zeppelin got when all this stuff came out about how they stole the songs, I was like, the only thing you mean is, like they pulled from blues songs? Is that what you're saying? Oh, well, there's. I mean, you go on YouTube. There's countless, right? Countless examples of them just stealing music. They're finally going to trial for stuff like really. That. That, yeah, there's something. Oh, I didn't know. About Something's that. finally coming up legally where it's like they might get in trouble now for it's for Stairway to Heaven particularly. Yeah. But my point is, is when I was never a big Zeppelin fan. So when that came out, I was like, man, the only way I could relate to this, I think, is if I found out that Richard Pryor stole all his material. Right. And thankfully, that is not what happened. But something almost as devastating to me. Well, it's. I understand that rape is much worse than stealing. Yeah, I just wasn't as fa I wasn't as big a fan of Cosby as I was of Richard Pryor. Right. But my point is, is it's pretty devastating to me to see this this whole thing collapse with this guy because you're just like, uh, that sucks. He was a demon the whole time. I looked up to this guy. Yeah, I think that if we truly knew what went on with a lot of people, some of them are heroes, we would be pretty fucking disgusted. And probably not like them as much. I agree with that. They recently did some big thing trying to expose Bill Murray about how he had beaten an ex-wife and all of her allegations. And I had heard from a pretty reliable source that Bill Murray was punching a woman who was down on the ground on the streets of New York with like people trying to pull him off of her at one point. And the Bill Murray things just kind of fly off. You know, you don't want to believe it. You can't believe it. I don't know if either of those things are true, but his wife was alleging these things during a messy divorce, so who knows. But, like, something like that, what do you do? Woody Allen, it's starting to seem like people are getting more and more vocal about that. Well, What, what, do, you, what do you do? I still, st I still stand with the opinion that I don't think Woody Allen did it. I really don't. Yeah. Rowan Farrow's latest piece uh, against Woody Allen came out conveniently during the premiere of Woody Allen's latest movie at, at the Cannes right. Festival. Right. Uh, now, I know that's how that stuff works, and you got to put it out there at the right time, whatever. But, you know, according... You could use Rowan... Ro, is it Ronan or Rowan? Whatever. Ronan. You could use his argument against his argument. His whole thing is, well, I guess the celebrities never have to pay, and fame is the opinion that we will, you know, will dictate the opinion we listen to. It. It's like, well, dude, you have a brother, yeah, that has said the polar opposite of what you're saying, and has contradicted everything you and your mother are saying, and saying is, is in fact that she has brainwashed you and many of the other children in that house, and this is all a lie, right? But nobody knows about that because that guy's like a lawyer and you're Ronan, Ronan Farrell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Farrell. Uh, so, 
it's all you know i gotta just tell you pat everything just disgusts me sure i just you know i just hate everything <laughs> and uh i'm envious what what do you envy back. i envy people honestly i envy people that are too uh aloof to not care about this sh- well no that's not true i don't envy people that are too aloof to not care about the state of things i but- at times envy the stupidity of a person who is able to just go through their day and not be affected by every little thing and not be like, ah, oh, you fucking kidding me with this traffic? Are you kidding me with this asshole? Well, there's a difference. This between... asshole is getting this job. Are you kidding me? He's, li- you know. Well, on here's on. the thing. There are stupid people and aloof people that that sort of stuff doesn't affect. But then the person I truly envy is the person that understands what's happening, can process it, and knows how to compartmentalize it and not let it fuck their day up. Yeah. Sure. That's who I envy because I'll tell you, man, it, it doesn't take much for me to just want to not even leave the house. Yeah. You know, one weird interaction at a taco stand or, you know, at the coffee shop or whatever. Somebody shoves in line in front of me. Somebody, you know, doesn't say thank you. I mean, that, that like, I, I'll just be like the, the world's fucked. I, I just can't stand it. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's a f- major fault of mine. So that's who I envy. I envy the person that can go through. And just, and I also envy the people that don't beat themselves up because as much as I like to go out and have some fun as a bachelor and whatever, there's always the self-deprecation and the judgment that I inflict on myself with, you know, why aren't you married yet or do you, should you be settled down? Are you too old for this shit? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and then I, every, without fail, every time I'd say that to one of my married friends, they go, stop beating yourself up. Yeah. You're having a great time. It'll happen when it happens. Enjoy yourself. Trust me. Just have fun. Well, then you'll get married and have kids and be like, why didn't I enjoy myself more? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's I a don't terrible do way that. to live. Yeah. I don't want to do that. So those are my top but two. But you will. Like, that's the, that's the types of personalities we have, and it's, it's awful, but that's the truth. All right. Well, so there's no hope, as I said before. There's no happiness. You forget that you were unhappy when you, you know. Diarrhea shit show, as I said. I went back to uh, New York and I was like, you know, I went there very recently and I was like, boy, when I was here 10 years ago, that's when I was truly happy and on top of the world and everything. was. And I'm like, no, you were miserable and broke. And what are you talking about? Right. You, you just romanticize different times of your life. It's stupid. You're, en- you're envious of yourself. And you shouldn't be. You should if try you to will. enjoy what you have. I think the point of all these things is enjoy what you have and don't do anything to excess is the point of these seven deadly sins. But I completely disagree with the excess part. <laughs> Except I see where being envious to excess is bad for you, but like as we discussed with gluttony, if you're not being gluttonous once in a while, I don't think you're living life. No. You got to Yeah, it's when you do it constantly. Yeah. That uh, it hurts you. Sorry, I just stand up here and look because there's a spider behind you. I need to make sure it wasn't like a tick. Is it going to leap into my hair? I hope so. <laughs> Arachnophobia. A spice style. to this day. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's... I agree, Pat. I think the point of these seven podcasts has been have fun. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Don't hurt other people and don't hurt yourself. Yeah. And I excess w- can lead to that. What, but what type of person are you most jealous of? <laughs> well, I was trying to think on the way over here. Like, I I love my my house, my job, my friends, my girlfriend, etc. I'm not envious of, of people in that way. I don't think, oh, I wish I had a bigger house. I don't think, oh, I wish I had. You know, I used to think to myself... Some friend would show up and be dating like a, a model or something. It still happens. In LA, it happens all the time. You're like, how did this loser get this girl? What's going on? And I would be jealous, I guess, until you spend 10 minutes with them. And you're like, oh, they are right. completely miserable. This girl is awful. She's controlling of him. He hates his life right now. Um, you just got to dig a little deeper into these situations, and the envy goes away. Instagram now. Facebook creates these things where people will brag about their fucking lives or show some picture of like me and my boo out on the boat. And when you get to know these couples, you know, as I do in some cases, well, you're like, oh, no, wait a minute. I've, I've spent time with you guys. You're putting these pictures out to create some 
image of yourself to make everyone jealous of you, which is a part of it, whether they would admit it or not, makes people envious of you, and also act like you've got your shit together and you have this great life. But if you spend five minutes with these people, they have huge problems. Yes. The I more agree. a couple posts about their love oh, a- yeah. and how, how crazy they are about each other, the more things are really going to shit and rotting inside, in my opinion. My friend, uh, my friend Rachel Feinstein, who's a very funny comic. Watch yes, her I liked her special. Yes, watch her special, Only Whores Wear Purple. Uh, it's out now, Comedy Central. I think it's on Amazon. You can watch it, too. Um, but she's great. And uh, But she said once about, we knew a guy who was married and had kids and was always just telling you about his family and whatever and and one day she said i've never met anybody that tries so hard to make you think he's happy and it's like yeah that's exactly what that is like i know several people like that and it when you when you can pick at it that's when you realize that what's going on is just a facade you don't feel that envy in them you're like oh no this is actually way sadder than what i'm dealing with oh yeah um oh yeah but you know? it's the it's the dumb people, you know that that I worry about. It's when it's when you see, you know, the Kardashians are an easy target or whoever else who still claim publicly in interviews that they've had no plastic surgery, they didn't have any ass implants or anything like that, and they put these pictures up. So girls are doing eight billion squats a day trying to get their asses to act like that when they won't and can't. These Instagram models. Some girl finally went off and explained that. Each of her pictures requires like three hours of prep and filters and doctoring. She looked insanely hot in the pictures. Right. But then you see her and she's like kind of normal looking. But then as these little, because it's not all guys following hot girls on Instagram. It's girls like for hashtag body goals who yeah. follow these beautiful girls. And they're trying to get their bodies to look like these girls. And they can't because through the work of Photoshop filters and plastic surgery, they look like completely unattainable people yeah no it's absurd it's absurd it's uh lady stop doing it to yourself it creates much more envy and you know like and, you know look i know that in the i know that at times men are at fault of making women feel they have to live up to that standard now it's an open playing field women are just as guilty of making themselves feel like that yeah as men have been previously it's like st- stop doing it to yourself like just be you yeah yeah the uh you know every girl's obsessed now with an ass getting a bigger ass um years ago it was tits you know it's just whatever anyone says is now suddenly cool everyone's focused on it's kind of crazy rap kind of dictates it in an odd way <laughs> Whatever they're talking about in rap becomes like the thing. Well, who knew that Sir Mix a Lot was a, a was prophet? A, a foresee. <laughs> he was a prophet. Was to come. Uh, you and know, he Pat, cannot lie either. We learned it. I think we learned a nice lesson here today. I really do. I think we learned that both of us are far less envious than maybe we feared we were initially. Yes. And it makes me feel, feel pretty goddamn good. Yes, my, my envy is anger at the undeserving getting things that they don't deserve. And really all that does after all that anger and frustration at the world, at some horrifically unfunny person getting some job, getting some deal, whatever, all it really does is make me go, but you know you're so much funnier and more talented, so just do the work and then you'll be better off. And it, my, it makes you work. And my envy is at the people that don't let you know the guy that uh oh god give me an example here you know my envy is the guy that can go to the gro- is of the guy that can go to the grocery store and get an attitude when he's trying to return the fish that they sold him that was rotten when they <laughs> sold it to him right. uh not letting that destroy his day yeah no i envy that as well world i envy that as well well i was trying to have my own cuz you had your own but you can take mine too pet i'm I'm just merely agreeing, and I would think you'd agree <laughs> with mine as well. I do. I didn't quite fully grab. I tuned out half part through the way through, but I sounded like I got it. Uh, yeah, it's just you know when I you know I I have some success when I reach the next level, whatever that may be. I will know I got there off of talent and not off of lying. That makes me feel good. That makes me 
comfortable with the envy that I feel because it drives me on. I'm going to say this person is not happy. They know they got there through false pretenses. I hear you. This person, that person. And it's and it's acting and everything else. Actors in this town are like, how did that guy get another part? He's a terrible actor. I, can, I almost can't be friends with actors. Yeah, it's it's a that's a tough gig. The though. amount of envy in that job, you know, r- the writing world is sort of bad enough, but the acting world is perhaps worse. Comedians I, are like everybody's like that, unfortunately. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm just very happy that I don't partake in it to the, anywhere near the extent that I used to. And then I guess at an office, people are like, "How the fuck did he get promoted? He's an asshole. He's a kiss ass." I mean, it goes on everywhere. I would assume. Well, I would say this also. This uh, you know, in summary of all seven of these sins. Prozac is the answer. Prozac is what made me start doing these things with proper limitations and enjoying them instead of yeah. doing them to complete excess with terrible guilt and self-loathing, self-loathing and whatever else. I tell you, I still so. haven't done it, but I always think about it. Changed my life for the better with 100%. People you seem go like off of just... it. I go, why do you go off of it? Yeah. It's just stay on it forever. Who cares? What do you pay a year for Prozac? It's like four dollars a month or something. It's four dollars a month. Yeah, you get the generic kind. It's it's nothing. Even yeah. if you don't have insurance, it's like ten dollars. Yeah, it's cr- it, you know, it's like yeah. I, I mean, mean, I can't imagine you without it. If if this entire time you've been on it, <laughs> it must just be a goddamn nightmare. You don't even know, buddy. Yeah. You don't even know. I I I I'd tear the whole hangout down if I yeah. wasn't if I wasn't in the mood. I I'm was, sure. I was I wasn't. I still had friends and I was well liked, but I I had a dark side that I wasn't very proud of. Right, emotional dark side, I should say. Um, listen, Pat, as enjoyable as it's been talking to you about all these sins for these last seven episodes, uh huh. I greatly and eagerly look forward to our return to movies. Yeah, and I just mean, movies uh, starting next month. Uh, if only I, I knew who came up with the idea for this uh, Seven Deadly Sins format change, we could really write him an angry letter. Yeah, it was me, and yeah. you're exhibiting pride right now, <laughs> which makes me want to exhibit wrath. Yeah. No, so uh, we're going to go back. To our, the new format is going to be, if I'm not mistaken, you and I both watch a movie before, separately or together, and then we discuss it, correct? It'll be, yes, it'll be, uh, I sent you the new description, and essentially the new description is, it's like Siskel and Ebert, except meaner and grumpier and with more cursing. Yeah. You know, it's Pat and I very much agree on movies a lot of the time, and very much disagree on movies a lot of the time. Yeah. So the new format will be us discussing movies, It some of them contemporary, some of them classics, but you know now we can kind of cover. Will they be horror? I, they will all be within the realm of horror, sci-fi, or fantasy. All right, because all that relates to Fangoria. True. Um, but you know, it kind of opens up the doors for us to kind of talk about any movie we want that falls within those categories, and maybe even some of the episodes we do a few movies. Yeah. You know the way the way S and E used to, if you will. Um, but uh, I think for sh- sure our first episode will probably be Blade Runner because you and I both seem to despise the film. Hate it. And I feel like we just got a lot to talk about on that. And we got to decide, and we'll let, let's decide right now. I, I own four versions of it all on the same Blu-ray. Which one am I supposed to fucking watch? Uh, Directors? Should we watch the original? I'm going to be honest with you. There is no fucking way I'm watching it again. Yeah. I've watched the goddamn thing. And I, right. I, I, it's been I too own, long for me. I won't be able to talk comfortably about it, so I, I got to rewatch. I it. own what supposedly is the best version of it. I can't get through the fucking thing. All right. Well, so what should we tell them? We're watching the theatrical release or the director's cut? Doesn't matter. What's the matter? They, there's massive changes between them. We're going to talk all things Blade Runner. All right. Fine. Well, yeah, well one of the things I want to talk about is how everybody goes, oh, you got to see this version. Yeah. Once somebody starts saying that about a movie, it's not a good movie. Yeah, did it have the narration? Was the unicorn in it? Like, it's, you know what? They're all they're all really bad. I've seen at least two versions of it. It's boring as shit. So we'll probably do Blade Runner as the first one, and and I I, I have a feeling the fans have have spoken. the The consensus seems to be that everybody's favorite thing is when we 
talk about movies and and especially when we disagree about movies yeah and we've got a lot to disagree about i mean i want to do a batman superman episode i'm not gonna watch that again but you don't have to watch it again we had a long argument about on the air batman i'd superman. like to devote a whole episode to it i want to do the star wars prequels as an episode mm -hmm. you know yes that sounds great you don't have to rewatch all of these you've seen them I think it would be good for us to go in as experts if we're going to talk for an hour about a movie. Well, I didn't see the Star Wars prequels seven times in theaters, as you know. Nobody did. said experts, first of all. And let's not commit to any time frame right now. Let's just enjoy it. Let's just do it all as right. we do it. All right? Uh, you want to start with this negative shit before we even go down <laughs> the road. I mean, you know? I want to recommend a couple movies real quick. The Nice Guys with Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling is not a masterpiece, as some would lead you to believe. But it's really fun and really funny. I had a great time with it. Sing Street is probably my favorite movie of the year. A terrible title. But it's about you know a group of like 16-year-old kids in the 80s who decide they want to be a band like The Cure. Uh, it was so funny. Amazing music in it. They play the, the song that inspired each song that they kind of rip off. Right. Leading into their song. Right. It's It was an amazing gimmick, and the whole movie I thought was perfect. He has a relationship with his brother that had me almost in tears. I love the movie. And then Joe and I both, although we still haven't talked about it, I've asked you three times what you thought, saw Green Room. I, I loved didn't see it. it. You didn't see it? No, I didn't go that night. Oh. I was going to go, and but then I ate too much pie at the diner, and I, was, I felt tired, and I went home. So I still haven't seen it. Green I, Room is excellent, especially you know talking about the horror genre. It's a, it's a real thrill ride. I want to see it. The type of horror movie it is is... I'm not a big thriller guy, so, uh, you know, I I'll watch it, but I it wasn't one I felt like I had to get to the theater to see. Whereas The Conjuring 2, which comes out in two weeks, uh, I will be there opening weekend. I'll be there for that, too, but Green Room almost seems like it was made for you. It's uh, Really? It's uh, about the h hardcore punk world. It's about, like, there's no way you wouldn't like it. All go right. see it. I know I'll like it. I'll go see it. two minutes away. Get off my back. It's not there anymore. Oh. I took it out. Well, you only had six weeks. It, a week. Let's not exaggerate. You, we saw, you sure saw Captain America, though, didn't you? Well, I was going to go Could've see... Could have seen Green Room three times I was the time going you saw to Captain see America. Green Room. And by the way, fuck Captain America. I didn't like it. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Well, don't waste your time. Uh, folks, this has been... We'll see you in hell. The season two finale. And what a finale it was. Season three starts in June with the return to a movie-related format. We look forward to it. We will be back kicking things off with Blade Runner and maybe another movie. Who knows? Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Joe DeRosa Comedy. Uh, my website, JoeDeRosaComedy.com. And I will be coming to your town in June. A lot of touring coming up. Uh, Denver, Colorado, Comedy Works. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, The Punchline, opening weekend, first weekend ever at that club. I am headlining it. Uh, the Saint in Asbury Park, Alter, Bourne, Alter, 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 Alter Bar in Pittsburgh, and the Lizard Lounge at the Chameleon in Lancaster, PA. Uh, check my website for details. That's uh, You got anything? Sounds good to me, Joe. I, I'm... On Twitter, Vine, Instagram, at the Patrick Walsh. I don't really have anything else to plug coming up. All right. Well, you've been listening to We'll See You in Hell. It's a presentation of the Fangoria Podcast Network, produced by Thomas DeFeo, executive produced by Ken Haley of Fangoria Entertainment. For press opportunities, advertising inquiries, and information about We'll See You in Hell, contact Ken. His email is ken at fangoria.com. Thank you. Thanks, gang.